Mr. Corsi here. In this video I'll be explaining how to play the wonderful deductive paper and pencil game called LAP. Now LAP was invented by a Polish film director and screenwriter called Lech Andrzej Pijanowski. And he was born in Warsaw 1928, died 1974. And it was only in 1969 that LAP became well known when the prolific game designer Sid Saxon included it in his wonderful book A Gamut of Games. So let's now have a look at how the game works. So this is a game for two players and each player will require a game sheet. Now I've put a link below the video to a PDF file of the game sheet which you can print out. So two of these will be required and of course a pencil each. Some players like to work with coloured pencils but that's not entirely essential. Now there's an initial setup where each player should secretly divide up their own 8x8 grid. That's the one on the left of the game sheet. And divide that into four sectors of 16 squares each and then label them with Roman numerals 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now each of the sectors must be continuous. This just means all squares in a sector have to be joined edge to edge to the other squares in that sector. No islands, for instance, and no connections just by the corners only. So here's an example, and notice that the sectors can be as irregular as you like. And again, they should be labelled. But what's the aim of the game? Well, that's very simple. You have to deduce your opponent's arrangement of sectors, hopefully before they deduce yours. So let's now look at what constitutes a turn. On your turn, you call for information about your opponent's sectors. Now this information comes from you identifying a 2x2 two two block of four squares in your opponent's hidden grid. Now you identify the block using the coordinates on the grid. For instance, your call may be CD45, and you can see that block outlined in the grid opposite. Your call will be answered with limited information, you'll be told how many of these four squares are in each of the four sectors. So for instance, in the diagram shown, the call CD45 will be answered with 2 in 1, 1 in 3 and 1 in 4. You can see that in the diagram, 2 green, 1 blue, 1 purple in that block. And what you do not know is precisely which of the four squares is in which particular sector. So here's how the information may be recorded on the game sheet. You can see I've written the call, that's CD45, and then listed four sector names. There's a couple of ones, a three and a four. So as the game proceeds, I'll have a growing list of calls and answers on my game sheet, which I can refer back to. The trial and improvement diagrams, I would use these to try various combinations of sector arrangements to fit with the information I've been getting in my calls and answers. And the top diagram on the right, I would only use that to record parts of my opponent's sector arrangement that I feel certain about. So how's the game won? How does it end? So at any point, a player may stop the game by declaring she's going to guess her opponent's sector arrangement. Now at that point the opponent has two choices. He may say I'm going to guess two and in that case you have to make sure that both players have had an equal number of turns or he may say I'm not going to guess. So this will lead to various situations arising. So here's a table showing all the possible situations. Now, I'm calling the person who's guessing the declarer. The first four rows are when both players guess, and if they're both correct or they're both wrong, it's a draw. Otherwise, the player who correctly guesses is the winner. In the case where the opponent chooses not to guess, then the declarer wins if she's correct, but the opponent, that's the non-guesser, wins if the declarer's guess happens to be wrong. So that's a summary of all the rules of LAP. 
I'd now like to explore, by means of an example, the type of deductive thinking involved in playing this game. So I'd strongly encourage you to stop the video and attempt this challenge. I'll then give you an analysis of the solution. So let's examine the first column, which was for the block GH12. There it is outlined in the grid. Now the information given is that this block has one square in sector 2 and the other three squares in sector 4. And the fact that this block's at, a, at the edge of the grid is an important factor in our thinking. So let's concentrate on the one square in sector 2. You can see there are four possibilities for where that square is. And the other three squares are in sector 4. Now look at the first diagram. It's not possible to have one isolated square in sector 2. Remember, sectors have 16 connected squares. So that arrangement's not possible. So in the remaining three possible arrangements, square H1, the bottom left corner square, is in sector 4. We can show this on the diagram on the right. So let's now look at the second call. This was for the block F. G23. And there it is shown in the diagram again. Now since all squares are in sector 2, this information can be shown in the diagram. And this now eliminates the second and fourth diagrams above since they both have G2 in sector 4, which doesn't fit with the new information. And that leaves the third diagram as the only possibility. So let's transfer the information in that third diagram onto the main diagram on the right. So let's now see how the information we've obtained so far fits in with the third call. This gives us information about block GH45. And there's the block outlined for you on the diagram. So in that block we have two squares in sector 1 and two squares in sector 4. Let's first suppose that the two squares in sector 1 are diagonally opposite each other. And here's one way that this can happen. But notice that sector 4 square on the top right of the block will be isolated from the rest of sector 4. So that's not possible. There's one other arrangement with the two sector 1 squares opposite each other. But notice now that the lower left sector 1 square is now isolated from the rest of sector 1. So again, not possible. So the two sector 1 squares must be side by side. And there are four ways this can be arranged. Let's work through them in order. First, the two green sector 1 squares are on the left of the block. Can you see how this is going to separate sector 4 into two disconnected regions? So this arrangement fails. Now let's try the green squares along the top of the block. Well, this looks healthy. All sectors have room to expand into the rest of the grid. Now, let's try the two green squares on the right side of the block. Again, all sectors can join up and expand, no problem. Finally, what about arranging the two green squares along the bottom of the block? Oh, well, that doesn't look so good for sector 4. It's now in two separate regions, so that attempt fails. So that leaves us with two healthy possibilities. And notice in both cases, the bottom left square is in sector 4 and the top right is in sector 1. So we can be certain of these two squares. Let's add them to the diagram. Now, the final piece of deduction concerns square H3. It has to be in sector 4, otherwise sector 4, the yellow squares, would be split into two pieces. Well, there's our deductions complete. Well, I hope that's given you a flavour of the game and you enjoy playing it. So that's Mr. Corsi signing out, and I hope you enjoyed the video.